Okay, uh, good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the cholera genomic surveillance in Lebanon. Do I need to share my slides or you will uh, take care of this? We see them. Next, please. Sorry, we're just looking for the, okay. Okay, so our organizational structure at the American University of Beirut at the Faculty of Medicine, uh, we have the Department of Experimental Pathology, Immunology and Microbiology and the Center for Infectious Diseases Research that together were designated as WHO Collaborating Center for Reference and Research on Bacterial Pathogens. Now, our terms of reference next. Are the, the, the objectives of, of the laboratory uh, for, for cholera is a timely and accurate and reliable laboratory results that are critical for detecting cases and confirm outbreaks of cholera that may spread rapidly if not contained. And the objectives of the lab diagnosis of cholera includes confirmation of alerts, declaring outbreaks, monitoring antibiotic susceptibility, and detecting resistant agents, characterizing the uh, circulating strains, identifying changes in the virulence, supporting epi investigation, and declaring the end of an outbreak. So at least one lab in the country should be operational and uh, capable of isolating and identifying Vibrio cholera by culture or PCR, if available, and performing antibiotic susceptibility testing in the country. Now, the designated reference lab should ensure provision of transport media and reagents, uh, training of technicians and monitoring the uh, quality of examinations. And our laboratory actually, which is a WHO collaborating center, is a reference lab, which has, you know, uh, built capacity in order uh, to do uh, molecular testing uh, uh, namely, you know, the whole genome sequencing. Next. And our terms of reference actually include training people from the MENA region and from Lebanon, as well as uh, uh, doing some collaborations uh, with the, the different uh, uh, participating countries, especially under the PulseNet umbrella, and then uh, responding to emergencies. And in this situation, now uh, we have responded to emergency uh, whenever we had cholera uh, that uh, reached Lebanon since 1993. That was the first time that it reached Lebanon in October 2022. So the lab tests for cholera that, that are used, and these have been discussed before, but I'm just, you know, uh, mentioning them, the traditional phenotypic uh, detection methods of Vibrio cholera, the RDTs and culture, the nested multiplex PCR, molecular test the biotyping can be done by Malditov, the antimicrobial susceptibility testing, and uh, the genotypic methods now in the past, pulsed field gel electrophoresis was used and still it's been used, you know, in certain places. However, now the whole genome sequencing uh, have been implemented uh, under uh, the PulseNet uh, umbrella, which will cover all foodborne pathogens. Next. Now, uh, just... Uh, a few things about the, the traditional detection methods, like the, the rapid tests that utilizes the uh, nitrocellulose strips coated with anti one and anti one thirty nine antibodies, and provides within 15 to 30 minutes directly from the patient's stool sample. 
the results it can be performed on site and it can identify toxigenic vibrio quality uh, zero group on um, 139 next now the pcr actually <clears throat> uh, the DNA can be extracted directly from the patient's sample and detection of diagnostic genes using simplex uh, nested PCR can identify the infecting pathogen. Next. Next, please. Yeah. So applying the multiplex nested PCR would identify several pathogens in a single PCR run. And it's highly sensitive uh, in uh, its identification, and it can be done in less than 24 hours. Next. Now, our cholera surveillance in Lebanon, we have used uh, actually culture, and uh, uh, we have started, you know, our genomic uh, surveillance of cholera. Uh, upon the request of uh, WHO and in collaboration with the Ministry of Health. So WHO uh, provided, you know, their support by providing uh, uh, reagents and supplies and the Ministry of Health uh, through the Epidemiologic Surveillance Unit were providing all the samples uh, from patients, from the environment, like sewage, and uh, vegetables and uh, actually these came to our laboratories at the American University of Beirut at the WHO collaborating center where we have performed uh, culture using uh, you know TCBS uh, medium and uh, culturing that and detecting uh, the suspected Vibrio cholerae colonies next So this is, you know, the uh, laboratory setting in, in our WHO collaborating center where the cultures are performed. Next. Now also we have done uh, Malditov in order to be able, uh, we use Malditov in order to be able uh, to identify the organisms, you know, at the species levels. Next. So based on, on uh, our preliminary uh, studies uh, by doing, you know, culture, and we have also obtained the uh, uh, anti-CERA from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC Atlanta, in order also to determine uh, the, the zero groups. And uh, based on that, <clears throat> Uh, these are the results that are published by the Epidemiological Surveillance Unit of the Ministry of Health, where they show on a daily basis uh, the uh, new cases, the confirmed cases uh, by uh, testing, lab tests, and the deaths that are confirmed. Now, this is the, the last one that was shared by the Epidemiological Surveillance Unit in 24 January 2023. However, the Ministry of Health in collaboration with WHO uh, are continuing the surveillance process and the sending still uh, sa uh, samples uh, on routine basis to our labs and other labs and uh, uh, nationwide. Since uh, uh, we were able to to give you know some kind of uh, support training supports to different clubs nationwide in order to be able to perform uh, culture and susceptibility testing next please so the uh, ast <clears throat> we have so far completed the uh, AST testing using the disk diffusion. And we have validated the disk diffusion by doing broth di micro dilution assay on 68 uh, pure cultures showing Vibrio cholerae isolates. So 68 out of 300 pure cultures, we have validated the disk diffusion uh, uh, based on the BMD. 
So both susceptibility tests were repeated three times and they were reproducible and results match. Now phenotypic tests results match also genotypic results. Next. Now over here we can see the, uh, the different uh, antimicrobial susceptibility testing results using a panel of uh, antimicrobial agents. And the next slide, please we can see a, a summary of uh, the results uh, whereby we have demonstrated, we have detected, I mean, uh, antimicrobial resistance to meropenem, maledixic acid, pefloxacin, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, and uh, to uh, nitrofurantoin. So, uh, these are, I mean, the the the, uh, the antibiotics to which the organism uh, was resistant. Next, <clears throat> now ciprofloxacin actually uh, used to be sensitive. Uh, I mean, uh, the 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 Vibrio cholerae used to be sensitive to ciprofloxacin uh, in the past. However, currently, as you have seen we have detected uh, ciprofloxacin resistance in the tested isolates. So probably this has been uh, due to acquisition of plasmids encoding uh, resistance genes by horizontal gene transfer from another bacterial species in the environment. Next. And uh, we have found that azithromycin is uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the bacterium is sensitive to azithromycin and doxycycline, which both can be uh, uh, used along with other uh, antibiotics to which the organism is sensitive. Next. <clears throat> now, genomic surveillance in Lebanon uh, using the whole genome sequencing, next, was done on uh, uh, 68 isolates out of all those that were tested. Now, uh, whole genome sequencing have proved to be capable of detection and full characterization of Vibrio calorie species. So it relies on, as we know, genomic DNA extracted from bacterial isolates and it can identify serogroups, biotypes, virulence determinants, antimicrobial resistance genes, and the presence of plasmid and or bacteriophages in a single run. And it provides the highest resolution genomic typing method that can compare samples to source as well as uh, construct phylogenetic uh, uh, trees. Now, uh, in the near future, I believe that small genome sequencing would be the sole test, I mean, that uh, can be used for both diagnostic uh, purposes as well as for genotypic uh, purposes. And its advantage, too, is that the data can be uploaded on NCBI and it can be shared by everyone. So we have a universal, uh, I mean, it's universal and you can share all the data that we have in all places nationwide and uh, internationally. And this is, you know, in comparison to pulse feed which which is uh, quite uh, highly sensitive and very efficient and can uh, track the source of uh, the, the, the infection. However, uh, it is not, it cannot be shared as uh, the whole genome sequencing data can be shared universally. Yes, next. Now, as to cost implication uh, regarding that, whenever uh, the whole genome sequencing uh, would be applied, 
uh, and as a diagnostic tool, I believe you know that the cost will drop tremendously. And now we we have, for example, the the uh, nanopore that you can see here. Uh, this is quite cheap, and it can achieve you know results that are comparable to the uh, Illumina, like for example the MySeq. And uh, these can be transported. They can be uh, performed in uh, in the field, and and we can get you know excellent results. Next, please. So strain typing using the NGS was able to. Uh, allow us to detect, you know, the zero group, zero type, biotype, sequence type, and the uh, lineage. Next, please. Uh, of uh, fourteen, these are fourteen representative uh, isolates. The data of fourteen representative isolates out of sixty-eight. So you can see that uh, all the isolates that we have found they belong you know to one uh, i mean uh, to the most predominant one belong to uh, one lineage which is the seventh pandemic vibrio cholery o1 biotype altor and this is and the genomic wave number 3 so we found that all our organisms that were testing uh, that were uh, testing by uh, whole genome sequencing, they belong to zero group O1, serotype Ogawa, biotype LTOR, sequence type ST69. And the, all they are under the lineage of the seventh uh, pandemic, Vibrio cholery. Now, next please. As to the antimicrobial resistance determinant or genes that were detected by whole genome sequencing and uh, the tested isolates. Next. We have seen that, uh, as I have indicated, that there was resistance to carbapenem, chloramphenicol, trimethoprim sulfa, and fluoroquinolones. And uh, we have over here the, uh, the genes uh, like the VARG, which is a metallo-beta-lactamase that encoded for resistance to carbapenems, the CAPG9 gene for chloramphenicol, the DFRA1 for trisulfa, and we have three genes, the guy uh, a gene, PARC-C, and QN, are the one genes, you know, that encoded for resistance to fluoroquinolones. Next. So in this slide, uh, we can see, you know, the phylogenetic analysis, and this is in collaboration with Pasteur Institute, whereby you see in red the tested the isolates, the results of the Lebanese isolates, uh, the, the isolates from Lebanon in red, and all they belong to the same lineage, as we can see. And they are compatible to the Pakistani and Indian, closely related to the Pakistani uh, uh, isolates. So belonging uh, to the same lineage. However, uh, so these actually, this strain, is the most predominant, and it is resistant to a number of antimicrobial agents. Uh, we have another strain under the same lineage, which is, we have done it on one isolate only, and it's comparable to uh, the, 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 the strain that's found, the lineage found, and the, the strain found in Yemen. So uh, this is less predominant than the first strain, but both of them, they belong to the same, uh, to the same lineage. And this strain actually is multi-drug resistant. So as we have seen, you know, that uh, we were able to go from uh, the start of collecting the organisms 
doing the phenotypic and genotypic testing and be able to characterize the organism genomically and hopefully be able to track the source as it is indicated here, but probably we need some more testing again in order to confirm, you know, tracking the source from uh, what I have uh, mentioned. And uh, thank you. Now, uh, any questions that you'd like to ask? Thank you, Professor Matar. I actually think we're going to hold questions. Do you, do you mind? Do you want to ask just? Okay. You yeah. want to ask? Okay, we're yeah. very behind. Quick. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, no, you, you, you are making reference to the fact that the Lebanon isolate is close to a Pakistani uh, strain. Uh, can you specify when the Pakistani strain was tested? It's recent strain or it's old strain in a database? Well, uh, actually, uh, we have been involved in... Uh, uh, in, in obtaining, you know, some isolates from Pakistan, and uh, these were uh, tested, you know, by whole genome sequencing, and and uh, uh, with the help, you know, of Pasteur Institute, who had a larger collection, you know, of isolates. These were comparable. Uh, these were comparable. Now uh, we can see sometimes. Uh, like not 100% genomic relatedness, we may have, you know, 90% or 85% genomic relatedness. And these are due to different, you know, SNPs difference between uh, different uh, organisms. However, we can see that they cluster under one strain. Uh, 